Welcome to Rao Online. Today's topic is uretric and bladder injuries. So we start with a case scenario. Mrs. HF, she underwent hysterectomy and bilateral salpingophrectomy at a local hospital for extensive endometriosis one year ago. On sixth post-operative day, she noticed dribbling of urine. The doctors had performed some tests and told her that there was an injury to urinary bladder during the surgery and this needed a repeat surgery at a tertiary center. The problem was distressing and there was a smell of urine around her all the time and she had to use protective underpads and she even developed excoriation of the vulva. So what do you think has happened? Most likely this lady has a urethrovaginal fistula subsequent to uretric injuries at the time of uh, gynecological surgery done for endometriosis. So what are the points at which a ureter is prone to get injury in gynecological surgeries? So at the level of pelvic brim, the level of sacral promontory and when we are clamping the ovarian vessels, so ureter forms a posterior border of ovarian fossa and when we are clamping the infundibular pelvic ligament, we can accidentally injure the ureter. At the, in the broad ligament, while taking the uterine artery, we can injure the ureter because we know the relationship of ureter with uterine artery is like water flows under the bridge. So urine flows under the bridge of uterine vein and artery. And in the ureteric tunnel, when the ureter is uh, entering the bladder in the card near the cardinal ligament, it is uh, likely to get injured while clamping the McEnroe or the cardinal ligaments. And end the vaginal vault while taking the uterosacral ligaments, also it can get injured. Now, this slide is just showing the close association of ureter with the uterine vessels. So, this is the uterine artery which can go up or which can give one branch that is called as a descending cervical artery. This is the vaginal artery which can arise from uterine artery or it can directly arise from the uh, internal iliac artery. So when we are taking down the vascularity of the uterus, there is a intersection and the uterine artery goes above and ureter goes below and then it enters the bladder. So looking from behind, we see that uh, the ureter goes forward towards the bladder and the uterine artery descending cervical goes backwards. So when we are securing the blood supply, we should always push the bladder down. So as we push the bladder down, we also displace ureter a little bit and the distance between the uterine artery and the ureter increases. Uterine arteries are clamped very close to the uterus. So if we clamp the uterine artery close to the uterus, we should always push the bladder away and then only clamp these vessels. Otherwise, we might injure the ureter. This is again the same relation showing ureter. So water flows under the bridge and this is the uterine artery which is having an ascending branch which gives the arcuate branch which gives the, the radial branches which give a straight and a spiral artery. So this is the vaginal artery and this is the lateral view and this is the anterior view. Now coming to the laparoscopic anatomy. So this is the patient is lying down and this is the ventral side of the patient and this is the dorsum of the patient and we see this is a sacral promontory over here and this is the aorta which is dividing into the left common iliac and the right common iliac and at the bifurcation of the internal iliac artery and external iliac artery uh, from the common iliac artery there is crossing over. So the, when the ureter is entering the pelvis at the level of sacral promontory, there is a crossing over of the common iliac artery at the level of bifurcation and then it runs medially and then it goes below the uterine artery and then it enters the ureteric tunnel and it enters into the bladder. Now this is uh, the internal iliac artery, it gives a posterior branch and it gives an anterior branch. The anterior branch continues as the obliterated hypogastric artery, also called as the umbilical artery and in this gives a visceral branch which is the uterine artery and here as internal iliac artery is progressing it is also giving the superior vesicle artery. So these are the superior vesicle artery and uterine artery are the visceral branches of the internal iliac artery. Now this external iliac artery has also been shown in relation to the external iliac vein and the genitofemoral nerve. So if we were to protect the ureter from injury we have to find out the places where it 
travels. So this is a retroperitoneal dissection. So behind the uh, peritoneal folds there are some coelomic spaces and these are lined by folds of peritoneum and they lead to the formation of some cavities inside the retroperitoneum. These cavities are not occupied by organs but they are completely lined by peritoneal tissue and these uh, organs are lying outside the peritoneal cavity and the folds of peritoneum they are form the ligaments like the broad ligament. And this, these spaces which lie beyond the peritoneal cavity are approached by opening the retroperitoneum at various places. So what we see here in this diagram is we see here the ureter, we see here the okabayushi space, we see here the latsko space, we see here the medial paravesical space, we see here the lateral paravesical space, we see here the uterine artery we uterine artery we also see here the the latsko space here the okabayushi space here and the uterine artery here so uterine artery is dividing between the paravesical space and the pararectal space so we'll go into deep into these avascular spaces so when we try to classify them so the, we see that around the bladder lies the lateral paravesical space and uh, um, lateral para, uh, paravesical space is medially bounded by the medial paravesical space and the around the rectum lies the pararectal space and pararectal space is divided into the latsko space and the okabayushi space. So this is again the places where we can cut the peritoneum and enter inside the peritoneal cavity, retroperitoneal space. So this is the approach on the lateral pelvic wall. So we are dissecting the round ligament here. This is an IP ligament. So if we uh, uh, dissect the infundibular pelvic ligament and on the medial leaf, we should be able to see the ureter here. And we should also be able to access the structures on the lateral pelvic wall through the opening of the lateral pelvic peritoneum. So having uh, dissected that we see that we have cut the round ligament here and this is the ureter which is seen on the uh, medial leaf after opening the peritoneum. Now if these spaces are pictographically imagined in this, so the all of these places the roof is formed by the peritoneum and the floor is formed by the levator and eye muscle. 